Next, we will develop a formal procedure that will allow us to find the relation between the two quantitative variables. So how does one reveal a relation between the two variables, such as the price and the age of a car? The answer, of course, is in the data. To study the relation between the two variables, we must collect and analyze bivariate data. In our case, we must collect a sample of cars and record the age and the price of each car. We can organize such bivariate data in the form of the table. The best way to see if there is any relation is to visualize the data. In other words, we must construct a scatter plot. When graphing the scatter plot, we decide which variable present as independent and which as dependent. In this case, the context provides the clarification. The price depends on the age of a vehicle. Next, let's answer some questions about a possible relation between the two variables. Does the picture suggest that there is a relation between the two variables? Yes, the image clearly shows a negative relation, because as the age increases, the price decreases. Does it look like the relation is linear? Yes, it certainly looks like a straight line can describe the relation between the two variables. What is the graph of that linear relation then? We can approximate this relation with many lines. Is there one line that is better than others? To answer this question, we have to develop a criterion. The criterion that proved itself practical is the least squares criterion. It suggests that the line with a smaller sum of squared errors has a better fit to the data set. The line that describes a linear relation between any two variables is called the regression line, and its equation is called the regression equation. Our goal is to learn how to construct the regression line and find its equation from the data set, such as in the example above. To learn the procedure, let's consider the following small data set along with its scatter plot. Let's try to feed a few lines. y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals x plus 1. How do we decide which of the lines is a better fit for the data according to the least squares criterion? Let's compute the fits of two different lines by finding the sum of squared errors for each for each input xi, we find the predicted output yi hat by evaluating the regression line for each input. Then we find the error by subtracting the predicted output from the actual output observed. Then we find the squared error by squaring the error. And finally, for each line, we compute the sum of squared errors. Based on the least square criterion, we know that line B is a better fit than line A. But is it the best one? Turns out that the line of best fit can be determined by using the following formulas. While these formulas can be proven to produce the line of best fit, the proof is outside of the scope of this video. These formulas are rarely used by hand, but it is still necessary to understand their existence and know how to apply them manually. The easiest way to organize the process is to set up the following template in the form of the table. First, we need to find the average input and output. x bar is 2 and y bar is 3. We subtract x bar from each value of x to fill out the third column, and then square each entry to get the fourth column. We subtract y bar from each value of y to fill out the fifth column, and then multiply each entry by the corresponding entry from the third column to get the sixth column. We add the values in the fourth column to get s double x. Then we add the values in the sixth column to get s x y. To find the equation of the regression line in the form y equals mx plus b, 
we apply the given formulas for M and B. Turns out that Y equals X plus 1 is the line of best fit, meaning there is no other line with a smaller sum of squared errors. Now let's use the same process to find the line of best fit for our original data set. First, we need to find the average input and output. X bar is 5.27 and Y bar is 8.64. We subtract X bar from each value of X to fill out the third column and then square each entry to get the fourth column. We subtract Y bar from each value of Y to fill out the fifth column and then multiply each entry by the corresponding entry from the third column to get the sixth column. We add the values in the fourth column to get as double X. We add the values in the sixth column to get as XY. To find the equation of the regression line in the form y equals mx plus b, we apply the given formulas for m and b. Next, we are going to interpret the results. In applications, as I said before, everything in the equation and the graph will have units and its own interpretation. The slope, negative 20.26, says the unit $100 per year. In other words, the price goes down by $2,026 every year due to aging. The y-intercept is 195.47. The units are $100, which are the same as the output variable. In other words, 19547 is the price of a brand new car regarding the age. We now can use the equation in two different ways. To find the output for a given input and to find the input with a given output. For example, we can find the value of a vehicle that is five and a half years old by plugging in the given T value into the equation and computing the right hand side. The value of a five and a half year old vehicle is $8,404 according to the equation. We can also estimate the age of a vehicle that's worth $4,000 by plugging in the given value of V into the equation and solving the equation for T. For $4,000 we can get a 7.7 year old vehicle. We finish this section by introducing more terms. Extrapolation is trying to use the regression line outside of the domain, which may lead to inaccurate results. So technically, in our case, the x and y intercepts are the examples of extrapolation. Extrapolation may or may not make sense, and it depends on the context. Influential observation is an observation whose removal causes the regression equation to change considerably. In our example, the point 2169 is influential observation, because if it is removed, the equation of the regression line changes significantly. Outlier is an observation that lies too far from the regression line relative to other data points. It is important to distinguish between the influential observations and outliers. We just developed a formal procedure that allows us to find the relation between two quantitative variables such as the value and the age of a vehicle.